Hello cake friends. So today we will be talking about cake pricing, all things cake pricing. So let's dive right in. So let's talk about why cake makers are not charging their worth. Maybe you are one of those cake makers that are just starting out and you are, you know, having a couple of hurdles that you need to overcome before you get to that price level that you are wanting to get to. But then what are some of the reasons why you might be doing that? More particularly so, why would any cake maker want to undercharge? So let's take a look at some of the reasons why cake makers are not charging their worth. So in today's video, I'm going to deep dive in three reasons why cake makers are not charging their worth. The number one reason why cake makers are not charging their worth is because they are total new beats. Now, in my five-step success path that I teach my online students um, for Esther's Baking Academy, I like to define the success path or the journey of any cake maker. And um, I would say that it is a basically, you know, derived in five stages. The first stage is that of a total newbie. That means that you are just starting out. You've probably not baked in your past. Um, you are really starting to understand what a teaspoon is, what a tablespoon is. You are starting to understand what um, ingredients you would use. Um, you are trying to find out or distinguish the difference between different types of ingredients. I mean, literally, you are a total newbie to the baking industry. There might be quite a few of you in that category but then they are people that are total newbies then the second stage is that of a starter so if you're a starter you've already put out a couple of baked goods probably um, muffins cupcakes or maybe even a cake that you've baked before but baking is just not your thing but you are actually looking into making this a hobby or you are making um looking into making this a business so that would be a category um or you would be classified under the starter category now the third stage is that of a intermediate baker. An intermediate baker is someone that has been in the baking industry for some time now. And the, the biggest thing that distinguishes this person from a total newbie or a starter is that they are in for business, right? So they're not just baking, it's not just a favorite pastime, and they're just not doing this as a hobby, but they're actually doing this for profit. And they've already put out a couple of baked goods for, for you know, for profit. And I would say that this person is in business eight months plus. Then we've got the fourth stage. I call this the advanced baker. The advanced baker has really so much confidence when it comes to baking and decorating. Now, when it comes to decorating, the advanced baking might not, might not have all of the decorating or trending skills, um, you know, to set them apart in the baking industry, but they are, um, you know, but they are largely confident in what they are doing. An advanced baker also has a client base, right? They have a profile for their cake business, which means they have um, work to show for. They have a social media profile. They have cake images to show for. Um, and they also have a client base, an existing client base. Then we've got the advanced baker. Now, the advanced baker is one baker with a flawless bakes. And this person is really well known in the industry and they have really gotten grasp of most of the business skills, you know, the tips and the tricks in the baking industry and the business of baking in general. Now, being an advanced, um, sorry, being a pro baker does not particularly mean that you have arrived. Even though you are a pro baker, you know, you might still have a lot of things to learn. Just because you're on the success path does not mean that you are not professional. Um, you might be professional at any point of the success path. You might even have a pastry chef qualification. This success path literally has to do with um, your thinking. It has to do with your skill level. And it really also has to do with the impact you are uh, making in your life as well as in your business, which basically means you get paid from what you do and do you derive the benefits of doing a baking business. So now that you understand the five steps within the success path of most baking business owners, 
I would like to go into some of the reasons, which I mentioned, I'll give you three. I would like to mention the number one reason why cake makers are not charging their worth. It's because they are at that bottom tier of the cake success path. They are at that bottom tier of their success journey. And they really feel like they have so much to climb to. They have so much to get to. And because of that, they are undercharging themselves. They are undercutting themselves, right? So what I like to say is as long as your baked goods are really tasty, as long as they're decadent, that is a good enough reason for you to charge your worth. It's not all about having the most elaborately um, decorated cakes. One of the things that cake makers need to look at is their clientele. Who is your ideal client? If you target the right ideal client, you should be able to make sales from day one. Just from your delicious baked goods. You don't have to have the most beautifully decorated cakes in order to make a profit. And so being a total newbie is generally, I feel like a big reason why cake makers are undercharging themselves or why they are not you know, charging their work. And if you're at this stage in your life and you feel like you are just starting out and so you cannot charge a certain price or you are just starting out and you cannot ask a certain price for your baked goods, then I really want you to go ahead and download my baker's, um, my baker's confidence uh, cheat sheet. It is really just a tool to help you build your confidence, especially if you are starting out in your baking business journey. It is a myth Buster. Um, it'll bust some of those myths that you have around baking and being a total newbie. And I hope it's going to serve you well. Download link is in the comments. Now, the next reason why cake makers are not charging their worth is because of imposter syndrome. Okay, so imposter syndrome is loosely defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. It um, disproportionately affects high achieving people. So if you're one of those go-getter people, then it will definitely affect you, especially if you are just starting out or if you feel like you are a fraud or you are ripping people off just because you're charging a certain amount for cake. Because, I mean, some clients go as far as telling you things like, I mean, it's just cake. Why does it have to be so expensive, right? So you start feeling like a fraud and, you know, imposter syndrome sets in. So um, imposter syndrome will achieve high, uh, will affect high achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishments. Uh, many question whether they are deserving of accolades. So, um, you know, you might be, you know, um, you know, suffering from imposter syndrome if someone tells you things like, oh, your cake is so delicious or it's, um, uh, you know, I really like the design and you are like, you are just not, it's just not setting or it's just not landing simply because you feel like your cakes need to be a certain way. It needs to taste or look a certain way and you've not reached that stage yet. And so because people are giving you compliments, you all of a sudden feel like, um, you know, you are not worthy or what this person is telling you is probably not true or you could have done better. So instead of, um, you know, accepting this compliment, you are doubting yourself or you feel like a fraud, you feel like you could have done better. But then one thing that you need to remember is that you cannot compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. And even that person, that baker that you're looking up to, that person that you know is probably the best baker in town, had their own success path. They had their own journey and they had their first, um, you know, cake, they had their own flaws before they got to where they are right now. And you should also give yourself that grace to walk through your own success path to get to that stage where you want to get to. And while you are getting there, you know, you need to celebrate those small wins when clients come in and tell you things like, I really enjoyed your cake. It was delicious. It was super moist. Then you need to start embracing and accepting those beautiful compliments that your clients are giving you so that you can go forward. So that is reason number two why cake makers are not charging their worth simply because they feel like they're a fraud. Um, if they charge a certain price, they feel like they're ripping people off. So that could be like, you know, something that's standing in your way. You are your own block, right? You, uh, you are basically standing in your own way. So that's reason number two. Let's go to reason number three why cake makers are not charging their worth.
and that is fear and i mean fear can show up in a lot of lot of ways can show up in many many ways and i'm just going to mention three of these ways the first one is your mindset um your scarcity mindset basically your scarcity mindset will tell you things like um you know just because there are so many bakers in town, I don't stand a chance. I don't have a seat on the table. So that is a scarcity mindset. And you need to start thinking in the sense of um, there's, room on the uh, there's room on the table for me. I have a space and a place in this industry. I have a contribution to make in this town or in this city as far as baking is concerned. Why? Because every baker, I believe, serves a different type of client. And you don't have to, and I'll speak about this in another video, you don't have to serve the same clients that the next baker is serving. For example, you can simply, um, you know, niche down your cake business and focus on vegan baking. And many bakers are not doing vegan baking, vegan baking, right? So you could niche down and focus on vegan baking, or you could focus on, you know, uh, celebration cakes where you just do over the top, you know, um, cakes, elaborate designs, or you could just focus on fondant cakes, or you could just focus on buttercream cakes, or you could just focus on, you know, a certain type of cake or a certain type of baked good. You don't have to look like everybody else because not everybody, you cannot, I mean, if you sell to everyone, you sell to no one and you are not for everyone and everyone is not for you right? So um, focus on you, focus on being unique, focus on your unique selling point. These are some of the things that I talk about in my course. It's called the More Cake Clients course. If you are interested in the More Cake Clients course, just comment um, MCC in the comments and I'll hook you up with the link. Um, just to let you know, you know, this course is basically just to, um, you know, bring you on board as far as um, how you can market yourself, how you can st stand out from the crowd. Um, you know, one of um, the one of my baking friends said, um, don't be vanilla. Everybody bakes vanilla cake and whatnot. What is your unique selling point? Maybe you have a variety of flavors that you want to show for. So this course, um, you know, helps you to set yourself apart. We talk about, about marketing, about social media, how to, you know, set up your social media, how to get sales from social media. There is a bunch of things that we talk about inside this course and i'll leave a link um, in uh, the description below so that you can go right ahead and check it out but then at the end of the day limiting beliefs or a um, scarcity mindset can really um, be one of the reasons why cake makers are not charging their worth. You just feel like every everybody else is doing the same thing. If I am the cheapest baker, then I can probably um, get the, the, the booking. If I'm the cheapest baker, then I can make this sale. But that is not uh, that is not true. And, um, you know, undercutting yourself undercuts the entire industry in the sense that people think that cakes are cheap and and, um, you know, clients always go around running, looking for the cheapest baker. But if you can set that bar high and tell people that this is my price and this is where I'm sticking to, you are not just doing that for yourself, but you're doing a favor for all other bakers because you are setting the bar high because cakes are not cheap. Cheap cake ain't good. Cheap cake ain't good, right? And, and cake ain't cheap. So that is one way that fear can show up. It can show up in a scarcity mindset. And another way that fear can show up is in limiting beliefs. And I've highlighted a little bit on this. Limiting beliefs can be um, in the form of you just telling yourself that, um, you know, it, I mean, this can even emanate from your childhood. Like, I cannot um, get paid from what I do. This is just a hobby or this is just, you know, I'm just a home baker. I'm baking from my house, so I cannot charge a certain type of price. Um, I'm using local ingredients. I'm not as good as a supermarket cake or whatever, whatever limiting belief that you may have, you know, it, it can show up from your past. It can show up from things that people have put down on you. For example, um, things like um, when we grow up, people say things like, I don't know what uh, limiting beliefs maybe you've grown up with. For me, it was like um, money doesn't grow on trees. So you might have grown up with that, that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and you need to 
grind and work hard in order to achieve something or to get money um, but that is not really true in its essence if you work hard initially there are things like passive income um, if you you can put a lot of work up front and then you can get paid from that later on um, and that is um, a form of passive income say for example if you have a membership of any kind Netflix whatever these people put in a lot of work up front and then they get paid you know from their movies and whatnot. So it really just shows, comes to show that limiting beliefs around money can bring scarcity, can bring, it goes back to the previous point that I brought, it can bring um, scarcity in your life, in your business. And these things can start showing up in your business, in, in the way you conduct business, in the way you think. So um, take a look at some of the limiting beliefs that you may have that have been passed down from your childhood. And this is like all embedded, it can all be embedded in fear things like there are so many bakers so i need to be the cheapest one so i can you know get the sale or make the sale um things like um you know ingredients are, are so expensive so i need to use the cheapest cheapest ingredients that i can find these are all limiting beliefs you know if you can um, bring out high quality products then your clients will keep recommending you um and i'm still gonna keep drumming on the fact that returning clients are the best type of clients because returning clients will refer your business to other clients and then they will always bring you business so what's important about getting returning clients is that you keep your quality consistent and you constantly improve on your quality and uh, improving on your quality has to do with your hygiene standards it has to do with your packaging and it has to do with um, using quality ingredients and I mean if you are just going to you know charge your cakes cheap and use cheap ingredients in the long run you're basically hurting your business because you cannot use quality ingredients you cannot apply like quality hygiene measures in your baking business and you cannot apply standards in your business and that is going to hurt your business in the long run so you don't want to you know, always be like undercutting yourself because it does hurt your business in the long run. And you will not get those referrals. You will not get those returning clients. And we know that um, word of mouth marketing is the best form of marketing. You know, I'm in an awesome, awesome, awesome um, WhatsApp group for bakers. So supportive super encouraging and um, we see things like bakers um, undercutting themselves and then the cake gets cut and then you see what happens with the cake and the client is so upset what does it say about that baker it literally tells that client that I'm not going to come back to this business again because the quality was totally not good it was not up to standard but if you order your cake from a baker that is not that cheap I mean, that client will not be disappointed and I'm sure they will refer that business. I'm sure that they will return because they did get value for their money. So those are the three reasons why um, bakers are undercutting themselves or undercharging themselves. The first one is that um, the first reason uh, that I mentioned was that you are a total newbie. The second one was imposter syndrome and the last one was fear. So those are the three reasons why bakers are undercharging themselves. And I hope that if you are one of them, that this video has helped you so you can overcome those hurdles. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.